The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, welcome everybody to your customer journey map is a big data tool. Um, I'd just like to introduce myself. I am Sharon Davison, and I have Rick DeMasso on the call with me. He will be taking the second part of this um, um, webinar, and uh, we're going to get started. So thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so here we are. So I'm Sharon on the left, Rick is on the right. And what we're gonna talk about today is about data is information. What does data become and how does it become big data and information collection methods and customer journey mapping and takeaways. So some of you may be new to customer journey mapping or you may be very familiar with it. What we're just doing is talking about what happens with data. So nowadays, there's a new saying, data rich, but insight poor. Most of us collect more data than we will ever need. Uh, and we only ever actually use a fraction of that data. Then nothing ever happens to it, it just sits there. And if you've ever been in charge of somebody putting together a survey, I was uh, uh, had the honor of doing that about seven years ago. I created a survey and everybody's like, make sure we add in my questions. We've got to collect all this data. Well, seven years later, we still hadn't used any of it. And that's just a simple exercise. Um, imagine what happens when you multiply that times thousands. So storing data just costs money and time. It takes more time to, to retrieve and more um, elaborate methods to actually get it. And what ends up happening, happening is you need tools that you can actually access the data. So data is just really a simple way for saying numbers, words, measurements, and observations, and they've been translated so a computer can process them. So we have what is called machine readable, which is also structured data, or human read readable, which is unstructured data. And if you think about the data from the two, if I uh, take a picture and put it on the web, if I tag that picture, that uh, tag is structured. But what is actually contained in the image and my inference and how I interpret that image would be unreadable. So that's unstructured data. Um, and what we know in the future is experts predict there's going to be a 4,000, over 4,000% 4, increase in annual data production. So that's huge. So companies um, that are more data are 5% more productive and 6% more uh, profitable. So let's talk about there's, um, what makes data big. So there's actually no official size that makes data big. It's just the term it refers to complexity. And, it re and if we think about it, let me give you a scenario here where recently I went to Universal Studios and I decided I needed to find a room that was close to Universal Studios. So what I did is I went online. So I was looking at data. So I was like, okay, what, what's available? And then I went to look at, okay, let me go to Expedia and check out to see what rooms are available. And then I thought, wait a minute, maybe I can get a better price if I just jump over here and I look at um, the actual hotel site to see if they have a better offer. Then I started thinking about, wait a minute, are they close enough to where I need to be? And then I looked at a map. So thinking about this, it, it's like all these different types of data are involved. So and then I eventually I chose the room and I booked it. So I had my personal data where I'm entering information about myself, my credit card, all of that. Then I had my transactional data that's being recorded, all the steps I was taking in order to, to find that room. And then I have web data that if anything is actually publicly available that you can access. Um, and then if you think about sensory data, I thought, wait a minute, I'm going to be at Universal Studios. Why don't I know where my Fitbit? Because I know I'm going to be walking everywhere. And that is data that is actually collected from a product. So it's standing back to the number of steps I took. So these are just examples of kinds of data that actually contribute. You know, so what has changed over the years is that we, the tools that we use to analyze data. So customer journey mapping is just one of those tools. And with a customer journey, data collection is measured and not mined. And I really want to stress the difference here. A lot of people spend time data mining. 
That is, you're going in, you've got the existing information, and that would be everything that I talked about, all those steps that have been recorded when I was looking for my room at Universal Studios. But the difference is when you do a customer journey map, you're actually doing some methodologies and ways in which you're collecting data that doesn't already exist. So you're adding to it. So as people interact with your products or follow your processes, they form what's called a journey. And this terminology, customer journey mapping, um, you'll be hearing a lot more. It's very popular. But really what it is, is the customer leaves a trail of customer experiences along the way. And these customer journeys are filled with important data or information that can be collected and analyzed. And statistics have shown that it's like most people's customer journeys are multi-channel. And if we go back to my example where I just took you through selecting a room at Universal Studios, if I were Universal and I said, I just want to know, did you buy a ticket? Um, and therefore, it's like that's all I care about. You're going to miss all the different steps that went into that journey because choosing a room did not just involve that one step. It mo involved multiple different approaches. So you have to look at the insights in to where the data is coming from, how does it interact with each other, and what is the and what is actually missing. So you have to harness big data because it's a massive volume, and you've got uh, different sources, different systems, you've got different quality of the data. You know that's going to make a difference because you've all heard the saying, it's like garbage in, garbage out, and then you have to actually look at how you're going to drive actionable insights. And, and actually, what is your business goal? And what are you going to do with this data? So if we get into a deeper understanding of customer journeys, it's like they can lead to 30 to 40% increase in more predictability of customer satisfaction. So it can actually make people um, have a better experience if you just understand the journey that you're taking. Um, if we look example, say you want to buy an item on Amazon, you're looking for a shirt, it, it's like the experience you have along the way is going to affect your, your buying experience or how you interact with something in the, in the future. So you've got to tie together the multiple experiences into one journey. And big data enables you to bring together the entire journey and see what experiences are working well and what areas need support. Um, you can also look at uncovering unseen correlations because you may not have thought about, wait a minute, I've got to take the user to this other place and that's going to be a bad experience. It's like they didn't get, um, things did not go well for them. You know, so you have to consider areas that haven't looked at be, uh, before. And then with customer behavior, behavioral analytics can show attitudes of the customer at each step of the journey and what led them to that next action. And this can really help you understand and actually build to better customer uh, retention. Using big data-driven insights, you can devise ways to retain customers, improve their experiences, increase the selling of add-on products. Or if it's an internal product that your organization is using, it can help with that too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have uh, Rick actually walk you through customer journey mapping and methodology and some insights into what you can do, uh, how it works. Sure. Hi, Sharon. Uh, well, thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Hi, audience. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, really quick intro. My name is Rick, and I'm a senior user experience researcher and strategist at Keylime Interactive. And essentially what I'd like to do here is, for those of the folks that haven't had very much experience with CJMs, or customer journey maps, um, I'd like to give you a brief overview as to how you can actually create your own customer journey map. Now, the process that we're gonna outline is how Keylime Interactive does it and how we've had uh, an opportunity time over time to actually employ this methodology with Fortune 5 Virgin clientele. But essentially, this is a blueprint of how we run them and it's a good opportunity for us to talk through how they're actually created. So essentially, we break the deliverable of a journey map up into four separate sections, the first of which is really just a discovery section. And this is essentially a fact finding mission. This is an opportunity to leverage existing behavioral insights that you've managed, that you've collected and harvested from big data and give you an opportunity to conduct interviews with executives, product team members, 
all of which to give you a better context of how did we get here and where do we want to go. And that's essentially the, the blueprint for a current state and a future state journey map. So where big data plays a role is, is big data essentially serves as a jump off point for uncovering metrics as to where the opportunities are in terms of the current journey, as well as what, if any, blind spots potentially exist in your understanding of the user's behavior and user journeys. And this ultimately does a great job of helping us to identify specific use cases that we want to highlight within a specific journey mapping session. So essentially, once we're actually conducting the workshops themselves, we actually have an opportunity to bring in a, a cross-functional collection of team members who have both expertise in terms of what the product vision is, as well as from a senior perspective, where the vision wants to take us. So this, uh, this combined with analytics allows us to have a better understanding of what is going to differentiate this particular flow for different personas, for different archetypes of which we're able to identify. Ultimately, once we have an opportunity to conduct this customer journey mapping workshop, we have an opportunity to really validate um, our presumptive journey maps. And I, I want to quickly go back to the idea of developing this presumptive state of journey maps because we've actually identified a very great correlation between time and ROI in developing these presumptive journey maps, which is essentially leveraging big data as opposed to or in lieu of behavioral personas. Oftentimes, we do run into organizations that don't have the technical capabilities or don't have the current infrastructure set up to develop these behavioral personas. Us. So we've actually used big data and insights collected from behavioral and attitudinal characteristics to inform the personas themselves and use that in lieu of uh, more robust behavioral personas. But ultimately, when we're actually conducting this validation study, we actually have an opportunity to run a large scale quantitative research project that allows us to better refine and identify root causes that are that are specifically attributed to pain points along that customer journey map. And again, these are the pain points that our big data has alluded to us as potential blind spots, areas that we aren't sure as to how exactly the flow is actually working out. So this validation process allows us to better contextualize that process overall. And ultimately, what we do as an organization and where the UX experts really have an opportunity to, to weigh in and, have an, um, and formulate the process moving forward, the insights that are gathered throughout this validation portion are actually created into these detailed action plans that help improve the overall CX and develop future state product solutions. In the past, and I'll go through this use case in a little bit more detail in the future, but we actually had an opportunity to take these insights that are harvested from big data as well as these customer journey maps to develop specific OKRs. And this is uh, famously used by companies like Google that are developing objectives and key results that business units are then ultimately able to measure themselves and develop an understanding of how do we track ROI of UX and how do we start to invest in very specific optimizations that are specifically focused to pain points that we've identified along the customer journey map that are also validated by big data. Sharon? Do you mind switching over to the next slide? Great. So essentially, uh, another high-level overview of what a customer journey map entails and what it should ideally possess is uh, made up of a multitude of different things. But at the core, what a customer journey map essentially is, it's a visual, a visual or graphical representation of a customer's journey along a very specifically defined use case. So to Sharon's point, Sharon wanted to look for a hotel room as she was going through, as she was going to Universal Studios. That is the well-defined use case. We have persona, we have behavioral characteristics that illuminate who specifically we're talking about. So that answers the who is within the persona. And then we have very detailed nuances of understanding the actions. What are the actions that are taken along each step? More specifically, where are those steps taking place? So what are the mediums? If you identify if it's an omni-channel type of experience, things are, people are doing things on the mobile device or jumping back and forth between their desktop. And then ultimately it's important to contextualize what a user is thinking. What are users feeling? And these are all attitudinal and emotional data points that are being harvested from the customer journey map. And the, the great part about conducting presumptive journey maps is that we actually have an opportunity to quantify and validate the severity and the valence of these emotions in a more robust and quantitative sense. So you have the presumptive element and then you have the quantitative support uh, that is ultimately being brought to you by that validation study. And then as the UX experts, we have an opportunity to provide the sense of how can we create these opportunities? How can we start to optimize and pinpoint specific areas along the customer journey map that we've identified are causing these pain points along the way? 
Sharon, next slide. So I've had an opportunity to cover a little bit about the basics of customer journey maps, but I want to try and bring this full circle to some of the points that Sharon was alluding to earlier. And it's really how big data can help inform and empower your customer journey maps. So essentially we look at it in two separate ways. You can either leverage existing data to inform the development and how you want to curate and formulate your customer journey maps before the fact, or on the flip side, you can leverage customer journey maps to identify how you want to leverage big data moving forward. So essentially we break them up into two different ways and I wanna cover existing data first. So essentially what this does is serve as a way to prioritize use cases and develop specific business cases for specific scenarios that you want to optimize. Oftentimes you have a crowded room of stakeholders, each with individual ideas as to which use case is the most relevant for a particular persona. Big data can help inform the areas that are causing the most friction causing the most pain points. And it really essentially helps us solidify which use cases are most relevant to us and how we're actually gonna take on this uh, workshop of actually conducting the customer journey map. And in the past, we've actually leveraged this big data, as I mentioned earlier, in lieu of behavioral personas. Now, in an ideal world, we have behavioral personas that can quickly and uh, efficiently tell us you know, what are the actions that are being taken, what are the uh, attitudes that are correlated with those actions along the way, but oftentimes organizations don't have this data available to them. So behavioral data actually helps us get much further along the process, and then together we can actually develop these lean personas that are much more user-friendly when it comes to developing these lean workshop methodologies. And ultimately, when once we have the journey maps that have been fully created, we can actually leverage the existing journey map to harness future data. So some of the ways with which we've done that in the past is customer journey maps often offer a roadmap itself on how to prioritize the development of new and enhanced web analytics. So it really helps us identify, hey, here was this very specific blind spot in our understanding. It only came, it only became apparent to us during this journey mapping exercise. Now we have a blueprint as to how we're going to prioritize the development of these future analytics moving forward. And selfishly, as a UX researcher and for UX professionals and UX evangelists on the line, it really ultimately solidifies us and gives us an opportunity to support the business case as to why UX professionals should have a seat at the table. Oftentimes we have this conversation about how to quantify the ROI of UX. Inherently in developing these customer journey maps and leveraging the big data tools available to us, we're actually able to identify how we can, how only a UX professional can make these connections and identify where and when these areas of opportunity actually exist and how we can develop a process to formulate how to optimize these very specific instances. Next slide there, Sharon. So what I'd like to cover next is actually a real world application. I wanted to give you a mini little case study. Uh, and there's a selfish plug of me, not a really great angle, but picture of me nonetheless. <laughs> uh, I'm actually conducting one of these uh, very specific customer journey mapping workshops in an instance is where big data actually played a significant role in our ability to bring stakeholders to the table, have in-depth conversations around the presumptive nature of how customers were experiencing their particular products, and then more succinctly being able to identify and prioritize how we wanted to focus on specific areas of optimization along the way. And essentially our clients, who was a large scientific and technical publisher, wanted to better understand and contextualize and really humanize what it is that their action, what it is that their users were going through in these very specific use cases. And in the absence of behavioral personas, we leveraged these behavioral tendencies, attitudinal understanding of, of, of the personas and the overall archetypes to really establish what are the critical use cases that we want to follow? And then how do we identify the specific drop-offs in engagement? How do we identify the specific friction points that are going to help us foster a more productive conversation within the journey mapping exercise themselves? Ultimately, throughout throughout the process of conducting the journey maps as well as leveraging the big data, we had an opportunity to essentially provide our client with a blueprint on how to better assess and predict uh, friction points throughout the user experience. And this led to a series of different conversations that actually developed an entirely new series of success metrics that were ultimately embedded and prioritized within their product teams. And a new feature and, and something that we've been discussing at Keylime Interactive and something that we're excited to discover uh, in more detail later on with different clients is really the opportunity to create these interactive journey maps. A lot of what we've discussed in the past is how do I keep 
journey maps relevant? How do I have them socialized and discussed and gone back to over and over again within the different product teams? And really the interactivity of developing journey maps and tying it together with the, the big data, surfacing real-time analytics, surfacing real-time NPS scores and all the other KPI metrics that go associated with it are really particularly relevant uh, in this specific context. We've also, we've also had an opportunity to link ancillary UX research uh, support and resources together with these customer journey maps that really allow for a more holistic understanding of the user's experience. So with that, I'm gonna throw it back to Sharon. Thank you for that, Rick. Um, so actually, it, we're coming to the end of our webinar and let me just summarize what it is we went over. So big data, is a competitive must to build better customer relationships and understanding of gaps. It's like what you do is you gain a deeper um, deeper understanding and of your of your customers' actions and behaviors, and you can use big data to optimize the customer's journey in the future. You can streamline and build a better experience. Um, you can learn how to do this yourself, or you can actually hire people to come in and actually help you do this. Um, but the, the biggest takeaway is you really want to drive to actionable insights. So you have to stay focused on the priorities of, and your business goals because there's so much information out there. How do you make sure that you stay on track? If we go back to my original example of finding a room um, at Universal Studios, it's like you need to actually be able to understand that and work through what is the, the goal? Are you looking at that from, um, are you the person that works for Expedia or are you the person that works for Universal? What is the path that has been taken and has been done? Um, so with that, it's like, I'm gonna actually turn it over to Rick to see if anybody has any questions or um, would like to ask us anything about the process or how you can do a customer journey map yourself. Sure, thanks. Sharon, so we actually did have a couple of questions and looks like this one's directed to you, Sharon. So question from the audience is, what other methods can be used to look at big data if I don't have time to map out the full customer journey map? So I'm sorry, can you say that again? So what, sure. what methods? What other methods can be used to look at big data if I don't have time to map out the full customer journey map? So you can do a subset. So if you think about it, the difference is we're looking at, if you think about um, customer journey map is just a tool. And one of the things about it, it's, it's encompassing a lot of different techniques and a different ways of gathering information. So you may start smaller where you actually just do one-on-one -on -one interviews with uh, key players or you get from your customers and you target specific areas. So you don't have to do the full customer journey but you can find the biggest pain points on gathering information around that area as opposed to doing everything. Because gathering some data and actually bringing it in and finding out how it's contributing is better than doing nothing. Thanks, Sharon. Next question here. I think either one of us can answer it. And uh, let me know if you want to take it, Sharon, or if not, I can take it. But question here is, what if I'm new to customer journey mapping? Can I do it myself? I'll start and I'll let Rick take over on this one. Mm -hmm. So the answer is, yes, you can do it yourself, but you may not get the best results. It's with anything. If you're not the expert and you haven't done a lot of this yourself, I mean, you can gather information, you can uh, do some of the methods that are involved, but it's actually better to have somebody who's an expert. I mean, we could, you, it's like changing the oil in your car. Yeah, sure, you can do that, but at some point, you're not going to get everything, you're not going to be able to fix everything, you're going to need an expert. So, Rick, your thoughts? Sure. On this? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, just to echo uh, Sharon's thoughts there, I mean, there's some great tools out there that are very user-friendly, very intuitive. One in particular that stands out to me is Real-Time Board. So, it's a, it's a very neat graphical recording tool that allows you to quickly document flows and one in particular uh, one particular template that they have ready to go uh, and it's quite easy and intuitive to use is this customer journey mapping flow so oftentimes we've seen 
folks that are new to UX or folks that don't really have a dedicated UX team actually document the user journey and user the flow using this very streamlined and easy and effective template. And ultimately what it does is develop empathy and develop a use case for how we can develop a more robust, how we can develop more robust insights by leveraging this particular tool and saying, here's what we have, here are all the blind spots, and what if anything can we do, or who can we speak to that can help illuminate a path for identifying how we can optimize these very specific areas of opportunity. So uh, essentially, you can do this on your own. However, when you start to bring in the idea of developing presumptive journey maps and validating, that usually takes a little more technique and a little a little more wherewithal. Um, and then also, if you're going to source it directly from customers where you have an opportunity to speak to 10, 12, 24 customers, all from varying personas, and you want to consolidate that into a single journey, uh, that often becomes a little more nuanced as well. So it can certainly get a little bit more intricate as you move forward. Uh, I think we have time for maybe one more question. Uh, yeah, it looks like we did get one more in there. So uh, Sharon, I think same applies here. I think both of us can take it, but uh, how long does a customer journey map typically take to do? And that is gonna depend on how much you want to cover, right? Mm -hmm. And, but Rick, do you wanna give some examples of a, a typical engagement where you're doing a customer journey map and how long would it actually take you? Absolutely, sure. Uh, I think a lot of what our time and our effort uh, is focused on is really helping our clients and our customers understand what are the what are the very clear and well defined use cases that we seek to illuminate. What is a very specific nuance that we want to uncover, and what do we seek to identify within that use case? And I think that oftentimes become a much more challenging conversation. So first is solidifying those questions, and then it really depends on whether you want to approach it from the presumptive route, which is where you essentially leverage big data, you ex leverage existing research that's both internal or even secondary data to help develop a picture of what is what, what is the motif? What are we going for in terms of the actual journey map? Or whether you're going to go the route of actually sourcing directly from customers and the, the customer driven customer journey maps, that's a mouthful. Um, actually take a significant more, significantly more time, more effort, more resources to actually source folks. Typically that's done in lab. Um, so there's the need for facilities. Typically there's a graphic note taker that's actually documenting the journey along the way. And then ultimately it takes a refined set of skills to be able to understand holistically what the journey is and how to consolidate the areas of opportunity, where the overlaps are, where the differences are. So depending on which route you take, the, the difference in terms of time to actually complete can be anywhere from three to four weeks if you're doing a presumptive journey mapping exercise and then hoping to validate that with a quantitative study to anywhere between six to 10 weeks, realistically, depending on your sample size, if you were doing it from a more user-generated perspective. Okay, well, thank you. And I think that actually takes us to the um, end of it. Do we have any more questions? Um, uh, there, otherwise, I just want to say it. Go ahead. Yeah, there actually was one more. Uh, I, th I can think I can tackle this in really quickly. Uh, what are the best ways to keep your customer journey maps fresh? Uh, that's actually a good question. I, I alluded to it a little bit in the presentation earlier. Um, what we've done in the past and how we've started to collaborate more effectively and more strategically with some of our clients is this thought process around creating an interactive customer journey map. And this really serves as the basis and jump off point for a lot of ancillary research. So if you can identify or you can think of a particular journey, the user has their ups and downs, emotional valence, all the details are there. Um, we've actually had conversations where organizations are building interactive tools that allow users to hone in on micro journeys and micro interactions within the journey itself and use the customer journey map itself as a launching pad for discovering existing research that already exists. Uh, as you get to these large institutional and enterprise level organizations, um, you'd be surprised how many folks are seeing reports for the first time after it's been created after a year and a half. So the customer journey map itself can become a sticking point if you start to tie it together to a more holistic approach to how you organize and catalog your research. So just a quick tip. And I think that's it, Sharon. Great. So thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your um, attending and I hope that you actually um, can use this information or share it with others. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.